drawing lesson number four, a self-portrait drawing. For self-portrait drawing, you want to start by making an oval shape. Don't worry if it looks just like your face or not. And this can be sketchy. Okay. Set up a mirror near your work area. Looking in the mirror, you can get a sense for where your eyes are, your nose, your mouth. If you actually put a hand at the top of your head and at the bottom of your chin, you'll see that the eyes rest right around the center, from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin. Okay, We tend to think of them as being up high because they're the first feature on our face. However, we need space up here for your hairline and for your forehead and for your eyebrows. And that actually takes up roughly half of the head. Your nose is going to rest roughly halfway between where the eyes are and the chin is. Okay, later we'll add detail obviously. Your mouth will be roughly halfway between the nose and the chin. So this is kind of just very, very lightly drawn markings. Now look closely in the mirror and really look at your face. If you feel like your cheeks are wider, have your oval come out wider. If you feel like your chin is a little more round or longer, go ahead and extend that area to how you see fit and just kind of adjust and tweak as you go. Then go in with your eraser and hopefully, again, you always, always, always want to draw lightly. You can go ahead and erase the extra lines that you don't need. Okay. All right. Now, let's go back to the top half of the, of the head. Halfway between the eyes and the top of your head. You're going to have about where your hairline is. Okay. Now, depending on the style of hair, your hairstyle, um, you may or may not have your hair actually starting here, or if your hair is longer, um, or you have bangs, it might come down lower closer to your eyes. But that's something that can be adjusted later. Okay. And then halfway between your eye line and your hairline, it's going to be about where your eyebrows go. But we'll come back to that later. Okay. And then... Um, Let's see, let's go ahead and start with your first feature. Let's make the eyes. Your eyes are going to fit roughly the shape of five of them across. You do not need to actually get out a ruler and measure. What I do is I make the top arch of the eye, and of course everybody's eyes are shaped differently. So you wanna look in your mirror and determine the top half of your eyelid, okay? Um, keep in mind, roughly the length of five across would be the right sizing, one, two, three, four, Okay, I can see that the space between my two eyes here is slightly larger than the space between the edge of my eye and where the edge of my face is, but depending on what you see in the mirror, this can be slightly adjusted, okay? Now, you're going to go ahead and show a little bit of eyelid. No one's eyes are ever so open that you don't see any eyelid. So go ahead and make a second arch right below, and again, look at the shape of your eyelids in the mirror, okay? Now, I'm gonna add the bottom eye, and of course, look at the shape that you see. And the bottom eye over here. This is a great opportunity to try to adjust and work with the shape of your eyes to make them as similar in size as you can. Okay, you might see a little bit of your lower eyelid too. Just add a slight line there. Now, in the center of your eye shape, you're gonna have the pupil, okay? And then, inside the pupil, you're gonna have the dark part here. And I usually leave a little, a little white area for a highlight. And then I call this like the sun rays. It looks like a sun. The color of your actual eye is what would be in this area here, okay? Which we're not gonna worry about right now because we're not gonna be coloring it in. Okay. okay. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye. Okay, and then as far as eyelashes go, everybody's eyelashes are different lengths or lighter or darker, and they do kind of curve to the side. Okay, and then of course on the lower eyelid too. So make sure you do include some sort of eyelash recognition. There we go, and then of course the shape of your eyebrows. It's gonna be different for everybody. 
short, quick lines that move in a diagonal direction. Okay, look at, literally look at the spacing between the top of your eyelid and the eyebrows where they begin and kind of determine just how much space you need. Okay. All right, now think about um, where your ears go. If you look in the mirror, you'll notice most people's ears, and again, this can vary person to person, but for the most part, the ears align, the top of your ear aligns with about the tip of where your eyelid is, and the bottom part of your ear aligns roughly with where the tip of your nose is. And look at the shapes of your ears. Now, depending on the length of your hair, you might not see your ears very well if your hair covers them, but if that's the case, you don't have to draw what you don't see. Okay, now, um, if you have a short haircut, okay, if you're a boy with short hair or whatever, um, you're gonna notice that your hairline starts the sides of your ears. Girls, this is the same um, for you if you have long hair. The only difference is your hair tends to you either tuck it behind your ears or it goes down in front of your ears. Um, if you were to pull your hair back, you would see that your hair actually starts here. Not here. This is just where the hairline around your forehead begins. Okay, so that might be a little confusing. Look at the part in your hair, if it's on the side, wherever it may be. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a couple different versions of this, and the hair will come and kind of frame the face about, about right there. Okay. If you have short hair, you can actually show the direction your hair moves in and create that. If your hair is longer, I'll kind of switch the look of this person to be more of a uh, someone with long hair and the part is at the side, okay? You might show something like this. And if this is the case, you can show the long hair and the color of the hair, you might actually end up erasing the ear. Okay, and that's just how it is. Maybe we'll say this person tucks their hair behind their ear on this side. So these are all options for you, of course, depending on what it is you, you're going to show in your portrait. Okay, the nose. The corners of the eyes align with the um, corners of the nose. And I, I think of this shape as being somewhat like a the parentheses, like in writing. Just kind of a curved line there and that's that's again the sides of your nose you're gonna have your um your nostril what you breathe out of there just a little bit to the side of those parentheses shapes and then there's just a slight dip again look at the mirror everybody's noses kind of shape a little differently and then kind of cups around here then i'm just very very lightly kind of showing a second set of parentheses um and then this is the bridge of your nose and it kind of comes upwards this way Okay, and I'm not going to draw a really defined line here because I'm actually going to create more of the bridge of the nose later when I add my shading. Okay, and then finally, um, just below the tip of the top part of the nose, we're going to see, I call this like a little M shape. This is the top of the lips. It's like somebody took an M and stretched it out. And then you're going to go ahead and bring the corners of the mouth align with about the center of where the eye is. Okay. And again, you don't need to actually get out a ruler and measure things. You're just going to kind of estimate. Okay, and then there's the lower part of the lip. Look at the shape of your lips. You might see a little bit of a shape here with the chin. Okay, and then depending on where your hair ends and whatnot, you might see some of your chin. The next step would then be to add the shading. 